This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. In association with Micromax. Nothing like anything. Welcome to Heads Up, the only show that gives you the best of education, careers and entrepreneurship. And today we look at a breed of entrepreneurs of a different sort. The sort who are building for the environment. We are talking clean tech and clean energy startups. Today we have for you the entrepreneurs and startups who have proved that you can build on sustainability and be profitable as well. The sun and wind on your face the elements all around you and a good bit of exercise. Any cyclist or biker will tell you that these are the things that they love most about the great outdoors. What they love even better is to be able to be connected to the world while travelling across the country. Even with portable chargers, that's not always an option. But a startup from Bangalore may have just created the best solution by using a backpack. Uh, I'm, I'm a heavy gadget user, so I use my phone quite often. So we started with a very simple observation that every evening when I would come back from my work, my bag would be very hot and my phone would always be out of charge. Right? So that's when Lavina sort of made this observation that, hey, there's enough energy out there that you never need, should worry about charging your phone. And that's when Gandharv and Lavina Bakshi and co-founder Yatin decided to crack the code themselves. They started up with a firm whose tagline is true to its cause. Clothes are the new gadgets. How did they solve the charging problem without burdening the biker? By fusing the most essential thing that a biker or hiker needs, a backpack and energy abundantly available in nature, the sun. The final product, a backpack that uses solar cell sheets that charges a phone or a tablet and is waterproof. Uh, which is why, as you can see in this bag, there's a curved angle which uh, provides the optimum level of charging whether you're walking or whether you're on a bike which is usually when people sit like this or when you cycle where the angle further faces the sun. So over the day you get an adequate amount of charge which is one thing that we thought about when building the bag. Uh, the other thing is that this has to be fairly waterproof right? Uh, which once again because of the curved shape of the bag allows water to roll off rather than uh, go in through zippers that are usually there in the regular bag. Uh, we used a fiber sheet under this uh, solar panel here to make all the components inside waterproof. Apart from which we've coated this uh, the circuit itself to make sure the circuit is waterproof. right? And uh, in terms of the bag itself, uh, we've designed a fairly nice lightweight bag. So this is the lightest solar bag in the world. right? And uh, it's very compact and also aerodynamic. The idea behind the product was simple to give a sustainable charging solution to India's cyclists, bikers and hikers. But India is almost nowhere when it comes to having the world's largest number of cyclists. And it is for this very reason Lumos's backpack went world class right from day one. We don't integrate solar charging because it's renewable or because it's clean tech, right? We, we, we integrate it because it's practical, it's, it's very usable today. Any other source of energy when you're out there is, is still not uh, there in terms of its ability to being integrated into uh, wearables today. So that's why we went with solar energy as an option. right? Uh, going ahead with where our sales are at, so today we are majority exports. I would say we are 60% exports in fact. And uh, coincidentally our largest market today is Mexico. right? Uh, again, sometimes things go in a way that of course, uh, in a way that was not planned, but Mexico has a lot of cyclists. And a lot of people love these bags there. right? So Mexico is our largest market. In fact, if you just look at bags for cyclists, right, which is a huge market, right? So it's a 2.5 billion dollar market world over, right? With the majority of it concentrated in Europe, uh, in Europe, in in Southern America, in Southeast Asia, right? So these are the major concentrations of cyclists world over, and of course there's Australia, right? Uh, which is why uh, since we are a company that makes bags for cyclists, these are also our target uh, geographies. So for us, India is like a good testing ground because, and, and Bangalore is pretty much the cycling capital of India. So it's a good testing ground for us. 
but our main target is is still Europe followed by Mexico followed by Australia What are the other specifications of the Lumos backpack The bag uses a 3 watt solar cell which collects solar energy and stores it in a 2200 mAh lithium ion battery The backpack can be charged using a USB charger or even your laptop apart from the sun itself How efficient is the Lumos backpack when it comes to charging your phone as compared to the rooftop solar panels If we compare the rooftop panel and this panel this is less efficient but good thing about this is it's very efficient for low light so like in a, uh, it can charge from window light where the normal solar panel we see on the rooftop can be charged it needs direct sunlight falling on it so so there is a plus and minus on both side so generally rooftop panels are 15% plus efficiency where this is like 8% efficiency the bag currently retails at 5000 rupees in major stores and across all major e-commerce sites That was Lumos design technology with their backpack that doubles up as a power source. Now back here in Bangalore we also have another startup that is helping put rural households back on the grid. The startup is called Simpa Networks and here's a look at their innovative solution. What these villagers from this remote village in Karnataka want is very simple. Basic fans and lights that work for at least 12 hours a day. Uninterrupted power supply is something they don't even consider anymore. They aren't alone. According to the World Bank, they are part of over 400 million people in India who have little to no access to electricity. I think in comparison to the rest of the world, uh, we have our own peculiar set of problems. Uh we are doing quite a bit, but of course India is a big country, so volume alone is not important. The real problem with the renewable energy of all kinds in India is that we pr uh, produce or manufacture very little of the equipment ourselves so a lot of it runs on uh, equipment that is bought or uh, uh, procured from uh, international markets and so it does not uh, while renewable energy spreads it uh, it does not create the kind of uh, employment opportunities and other uh, opportunities which would uh, provide a boost to the economy as a whole this is the reason why off grid solutions like solar power have grown popular in rural areas but most of them are still unaffordable to the people here who cannot pay the heavy upfront costs for the solar systems this is where bangalore based startup simpa network has stepped in their solution gives anyone who has a cell phone access to electricity well the indian consumer in particular and the rural consumer seems to value asset ownership very much simply selling the equipment for cash was not going to work in fact many companies have been trying that for years and they can only reach the top 1% of the population very often they're buying the things they need in small packets sachet marketing small packets of soap of shampoo toothpaste etc and when you look at mobile airtime similarly customers consumers are purchasing in small packets of airtime So we realized that we needed to to replicate that pricing model for energy and allow customers the ability to purchase small packages of energy service. And that's exactly what Simpa did. They innovated on the pricing model. What essentially does Simpa give the rural consumer? They provide them both the hardware and the software inclusive of the solar system. They also help in set up by fitting them onto rooftops or ideal vantage points. for the solar system to get adequate sunlight once fixed all the consumer needs to do is recharge the system for the amount of electricity they require from their cell phones the process is similar to recharging a television dth service or a mobile service once fully paid the solar system unlocks and delivers electricity the solar panel is sort of the 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 part that powers the whole system so this would go on the customer's roof um that would power a battery or a charge a battery which is inside here now the battery <coughs> this whole thing is um the heart of the system is is a charge controller which has a user interface here but basically allows you know controls the <coughs> the voltage coming from the panel allowing making sure that the system that the battery is being charged properly and being protected in the way that we'd want it to and also controlling the power going to 
so loads. Loads are lights, fans, etc. This is um, one type. And then we have these tube lights also. We also sell fans, so this is one example of one. One of the ways that Simpa is really unique is the way we've enabled very easy payments and also the ability to um, disable the system when a customer hasn't paid. So that is through the Simpa hardware that um, is embedded within the system. So this, there's a meter in the system. Um, the customer can look at this and know at any given point by pressing the star key how much energy balance they have at, a curtain, uh, at a, any given point. Um, they also, when they run out of balance and their loads are not working anymore, um, they, you know, they go pay a recharge agent and then they receive an SMS with a code which they would then punch into this meter here and then it would re, uh, reactivate their system basically. The solution being used by Simpa is a patent pending progressive power purchase model or a pay-as-you-go service. A typical Simpa system will cost the rural consumer about 17,000 rupees for installation, paid over 28 months, or 607 rupees a month for 28 months. Each system can give the consumer anywhere between 60 to 130 watt hours per day on an average, depending on the system purchased. We developed a technology platform that consists of both hardware and software. The hardware is what's connected to the solar home system, connected to, embedded into the solar product. It's a meter. It has a display, it has a keypad, and it shuts off the system when it's time to pay. And it shows the customer how many days they have remaining. That's just the hardware, that's what you see. The software runs on our servers, and that's where we keep track of all the customer payments, all the um, agents that are selling our recharge all of the, uh, the payment history for the customers. So it's really the combination of this embedded hardware that's connected to the product and the software on our servers that together is a prepaid metering and mobile payments platform. Customers actually pay per energy day. So um, this is the smallest unit that made sense to us and made sense to the customer. We thought about and we tried um, charging per month or per, per week but we actually market it now as per day pricing, as little as 25 rupees per day. A year since the launch of Simpa Network's new solution, it has today reached over 5,400 customers across rural India. That was Simpa Network with their simple solution to help India's energy needs. Up next, Ankita gets you more on startups in waste management.